Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Lowe's here. We back on the throne of positivity where the first is last and the last is first. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Also, hit that like button so we could get this message out to all people. I know there's so many individuals that are experiencing suffering or a spirit of heaviness. And I just want to go ahead and address that and help as many people as possible. So share this video with your mom, your dad, your cousins, your friends, everybody, because we need to get over this together. Uh, and let's do this for the glory of God. So today we're going to be talking about why does God let us suffer? This has to be one of the oldest questions in the, man, in the mind of man, in the mind of humankind. And I think it's right there next to what is my purpose for life or why am I alive? I think those things all go together and it's just such a testament to the reality of the suffering that we experience in our daily lives. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I have all the answers. I'm not going to sit here and act like I, I can't answer this question for you. But I believe through the culmination of my experiences and what God has allowed me to go through in my life. And even recently, you can see in my eyes, I'm just so tired. Like I've been fighting adversity and trials and tribulations just these past couple of weeks. And it seems like the intensity of these things continues to go on and on. Like if somebody has put me in a furnace and like in the book of Daniel, the furnace has been turned up every day. It seems like another notch until we get to the seven times seven. And it's like, uh, you know, but there's those moments just like I sighed just now that you have this peace in the storm and it's so beautiful. And I just want to encourage you that God has a purpose in your pain. Why does God allow us to suffer? This is the question, right? Why does God allow us to suffer? Uh, I believe that God allows us to suffer first and foremost because he's trying to build our character. He's building our character. Well, can't you just build my character? This is a question that I've honestly asked. Like, I'm like, God, you couldn't use any other situation to build my character. Like, we couldn't do anything else besides what I'm going through right now. Like, maybe take a stroll in the park, you know. If you need me to get beat up by somebody so I can learn a lesson, hey, let me get beat up. I'd rather get beat up and deal with my wounds physically because I know when they're going to heal than to go down this emotional beat down and, you know, suffer that way because I don't know when those wounds are going to heal. But then, you know, I believe that God in this intimacy and in this inquiry that I had with him, he really answered me. And I believe that God knows our pride perfectly. He not only knows who we are and our character perfectly, but he knows our pride perfectly. And the situation that I'm going through is so God, like it's so God. I'm not going to get too specific because like my testimony is not over yet, but the situation that I find myself in, it's so perfect for destroying my pride. And wow, like you got to be real with yourself and take an account, like where are you prideful in what areas? And I guarantee you that what you're going through has something to do and is correlated with your pride. And there's a specific pride that you have with what you're going through, right? So let's say, for example, just a broad example. Let's say somebody struggles in the area that in their past, right? They are they struggled with uh, stealing, right? You struggled with stealing before your, your convictions and you came and converted to Christ. Now, your sins for stealing are forgiven, we know that by the blood of Christ and your faith in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. But those consequences for those sins still have to be faced. God does. God is perfect. The Bible says he disciplines those he loves. So what you do in your past, you're not paying for the sins, but you will face those consequences. 
The Bible in Lamentations 3, chapter 3 says that God does not afflict man from his heart. Meaning that God doesn't put us in situations to be like, oh, you get what you deserve. No, God is putting us in this situation and he wants us to learn from these things because he's trying to develop our character. Again, in this same chapter, chapter three of Lamentations, it says, should a man complain about his consequences? It's easy to be like, woe is me. Why am I going through this? Why am I suffering? Why am I going through the things that I'm going through? And the reality is, is like, there are things that we've done in our life that we may know or may not know, that we have to confront those things. Uh, as a man, one of the greatest um, marks of a mature man is his ability to accept responsibility for his mistakes. And how do you accept responsibility for the mistakes that you have made? You face the consequences without complaint. You face the consequences without complaint. You recognize Okay, I may have been well-intentioned in what I was doing, but my consequences still have to be faced. So, obviously, I'm speaking from a specific place. I'm speaking for something personal to myself, and that's just one area of suffering, right? I'm not saying, oh, you, you may be suffering in the area of like, man, I just lost somebody. Does that mean I'm paying for the consequence? No, nah, that's not what I'm saying either. So I hope that you guys understand I'm using one channel of suffering to prove a point. Um, you know, I lost six people last year due to COVID. And I'm not ignorant to the pain that is experienced in losing a loved one. It's something that is very confusing. It's something that is very painful. And uh, I made a video on Instagram and I was saying, what if the suffering that we experience can be explained this in this way? What if my capacity to experience joy is contingent upon my level of suffering? What do I mean by that? And it sounds almost a little bit cruel, but just watch. God is infinite in his wisdom and I can't assume to even think that this explains it in any way. But I'm trying to make it in simple terms. What if suffering is the agent responsible for creating or making space available so that joy can inhabit that space? Does that make sense? Like, And the level of suffering that you choose to go through responsibly it creates larger and larger spaces for your joy to inhabit. Like, man, I can experience more joy because of the things that I've gone through. Let's be honest. Suffering and adversity wakes us up to the reality. I, I think that the times of joy are fleeting memories. They're fleeting memories. They're here today and gone tomorrow like that. Why? Because you're in joy, you're in peace, you're in love, and wow, ah, everything is so good, and oh, the sun is shining in the sky, and there's not a cloud in sight, and I'm enjoying time with my family, and my wife, and my spouse, and my this, and my that, and I'm, I'm financially blessed, and there's no adversity, there's no suffering to be seen. So you're in bliss. So you become ignorant to time, right? You're ignorant to time, therefore time just passes by you. But let a little bit of suffering come into your life. Let a little bit of adversity come to humble you. And you're going to re realize what is reality for real. Those days, right? Those seconds turns to hours. Those hours turns to days. Those days turn to years. It feels like every second is just a year that is passing because the pain is so excruciating. What if God is using the suffering and adversity in your life to humble you, to get you to appreciate that which you have, right? The greatest desire, I think, in humanity besides food, right, and the desire to be wanted is the desire for something new. And if we get caught up, we get caught up in life and we're constantly seeking the new that only God can provide. We'll go from one thing to another. We'll go from pleasure to pleasure, right? 
will go from falsehood to falsehood. But God is trying to get us from glory to glory. From glory to glory. For what? For his glory. And how? By bringing us from suffering to suffering. God is going to use these things in our life to humble us and to wake us up so that we can appreciate the things that we have. You know, we always know you don't know what you have till it's gone. Why? Because we took the thing for granted. You took it for granted. You know, uh, I heard a quote that um, you're, you're, you're not, you can tell what you mean to somebody, not when you're present, but when you're absent. You can tell what you mean to somebody, not when you're present, but when you're absent. So that that is the reality of these things is just you learn to appreciate things when they're gone or when there's limited resources. So I just want to encourage you. There's a purpose in your pain. God is not just here to afflict you. God is allowing this suffering in your life to create your character, to develop this character. Why? To conform you to the image of Christ. And, you know, let's not be selfish. Oh, woe is me. And then, oh, God, why you got to do this to me? All about me, 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 me. This is for the glory of God. This is for the glory of God. If I could be straight, sometimes I need somebody to talk to me straight. And and what I be telling myself, even though I know this is not necessarily true, but sometimes I just need to hear this. It's just like, bro, you're complaining too much. Like, you crying I know crying to cry because you're hurt is one thing, but crying out, crying to complain is another. And when I find myself crying, crying to complain, I, I'm just like, bro, you need to shut up. Like, like for real, you just need to keep it down because there's a reason why in Exodus 14, God said through Moses, the Lord will fight for you. You only need be silent. Why did Moses why did God command Moses to keep Israel silent while he battled Egypt? Because their complaint would have kept them where they were and they would have been destroyed by Egypt. Their complaint would have had them going back to Egypt. And who's to say that Pharaoh would have accepted them if he didn't just slaughter them right where they stood? So you're complaining or my complaining, I'll dress myself so you could look at me as the foolish example and learn right because the wise man looks at the foolish man and learns from the foolish man's mistakes so look at me and my foolishness my complaints keep me in my position my complaints even bring me backwards but bringing me backwards the things that i came from are probably going to destroy me but if i be silent god opens the red sea where my back is against the wall god will break the wall and make a way where there is no way and he'll cause us to go through dry land to reach the other side. Here's something interesting. Israel never saw a sword in that whole battle. They never saw a, so a sword, a, a single battle. God fought for them and destroyed all of e Egypt's army. So let God fight your battles. God is doing something for you in this time of suffering. There's a purpose in your pain. I say it again, there is purpose in your pain. So I hope that, um, you know, you would continue forward. Don't give up. Don't give up in, in this time that you don't understand. Just understand that you don't understand. And you don't have to understand every single detail of what God is doing. The Bible says that those who wait on the Lord, God works on their behalf. God works on their behalf. You know what that means? The same example in Exodus 14. That's what it means to work on your behalf is that God is working for you. God is working for you. So just be still and know that he is God. This last example I'll give you just as an analogy so you can understand. You ever watch the movie and at the end of the movie, you're like, man, that movie was really bad. Likely, there's two likely reasons. There could be many reasons why you didn't like it. For me, most of the time is because the writing was poor and the character development was so limited you weren't emotionally attached to this character. Do you want God to just snap his finger and take you out of suffering and then leave you with no character development? Or do you want God to develop your character so that you can be this individual that has substance, right? So that other people can connect with you. 
when you go through a thing, other people who go through the same thing connect with you because of what you've gone through. Your experiences in life connect you to the testimony of others. Or your testimony <laughs> connects you to the experiences of others. I've been through many things in my life and because of my testimony, it gets me into rooms that I would never have access to. So just remember that this is not only about you, it's about the people that are around you. This is ultimately for the glory of God. And if you could just humble yourself before the Lord and say, God, don't get me out of this situation. Get me through it without complaint. Build my patience, O Lord. Help me learn what love is. Help me deal with the things of my character. What are my insecurities? Like, let God shape you and mold you because God is great. God is great. I know you have heard many times God's plans are greater than you can imagine. I would hear that so much during my time of suffering. It would get me mad when I would hear it. Because I'm like, if God, and I know, like, I'm just being transparent, y'all. I'm like, God, if if these plans are so great, greater than I can imagine, why aren't they happening right now? And how could it be greater than not what I can imagine? Because what I can imagine is pretty great. Here's what I believe God uh, spoke to me in, in my complaint or my inquiry, right? How can it be greater than that which I can imagine? Your imagination is only imagination. <laughs> Your imagination is only imagination and God has the power to make imagination reality, no matter how great. So it doesn't matter how great your imagination is. You don't have the power to make it a reality. Ultimately, ultimately, let's be real. You don't have the power to make it a reality, but he does. Because God is the God of the impossible. And let us not forsake our hope that we confess. That we know that he who promises faithful. Trust in the Lord in your season of suffering and affliction. This adversity is for a purpose. Think of what great a privilege it is that God has trusted you with this season of suffering. What a great responsibility. So I would just want to pray for you. I typically don't do this in videos, but I've been feeling this a lot. So if you want to close your eyes, that would be great. Um, come into agreement with me. Father God, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord, and we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for trusting us with this season of adversity, O oh God. We thank you that you do not allow us to give up in this season, O oh Father. That you have been patient towards us, even though if, if I was dealing with myself in this situation, I would have gave up on myself a long time ago. But I'm great that your patience is enduring, O oh Father that you are merciful towards us, that you are compassionate and you consider our weaknesses. And it is there that you are strong, O oh God. We decrease that you increase, O oh Father. May your purpose and our suffering complete to the fullest of your will in heaven, that it may complete here on earth. O oh God, we know that this is for your glory. May we not be selfish. May we be not selfish, O oh God. May we consider you, O oh God. Consider your ways. May we understand that we do not understand. May you lead us in truth. May you comfort us in the peace of all understanding. May it overtake us, O oh God. May you be with us, O oh Lord, for we know that you are faithful to your promises. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So, guys, thank you for joining uh, and listening to this episode. I know it was kind of long, but it is what it is. Y'all know what it is. It's your boy, Los. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that like button if you receive something. Comment down below what was something that struck out to you in this video. Or just give us tips on how you deal with suffering or why you believe God allows suffering in our lives. So thank you guys for joining. God bless you. It's Los. We on the throne of positivity where nobody shall dethrone us. We out.